All right, good afternoon, everybody. Got a little small crowd here today, that's okay. Um, I've got a really short um, presentation on headaches. Um, first of all, can I get a thumbs up if everyone can hear me? Perfect, thank you. All right, let's see here, I'm gonna share my screen. All right, does everyone see headaches? Can I get another thumbs up, perfect, okay. So yes, physical therapists can treat headaches, okay? Um, especially if they're of what we call cervogenic um, cause, okay? Essentially, this just means it's coming from the cervical spine, typically the musculature um, around those areas. Uh, I wanted to show this picture right here because it shows one of the um, muscles at the culprit. Uh, it's the sternocleidomastoid yes. muscle. I'll give you guys some extra credit if anybody can spell that without Googling it. Um, but essentially you get some trigger points some tightness in this muscle here. Uh, a lot of times it kind of either changes the position of the head, it changes the blood flow, the nerve supply, all that that kind of runs up and through this area. Um, these are the areas of your typical cervicogenic headaches. Okay, so you get a little bit of discomfort on the top of the head. It's typically behind the eyeball. Um, people kind of associate that with maybe um, from stress, looking at a computer screen all day, which yes, that can be a part of it. Um, but also kind of here on the back of the head as well. So here's a better picture of that sternocleidomastoid, big long muscle, okay? That is the muscle that, <clears throat> excuse me, um, kind of bulges out whenever you turn your head or you see somebody turning their head and they have that big muscle that's right there in the front of their neck. Uh, that's the sternocleidomastoid. Then you can see all these other little structures in here, right? So you got the splenius. There's a few of those muscles in there. The upper trap that we always talk about wanting to stretch, right? Um, here's your collarbone down here. Then you have your levator scap, which is another very important muscle that we want to keep stretched out. And then again, some more um, muscle <laughs> scalenes, okay? You have another one more anatomy picture here. Yeah. Okay, so now we're looking at the back of the head. These are some really, really deep muscles. Okay, they're right up next to the spine. You can see right here, we have some muscles cut away. So here's your trapezius, right? Um, <clears throat> this is that big um, upper trap that we're always trying to stretch. Then underneath that, you have a couple uh, muscles in here. And then over here, you can see um, the sternocleidomastoid is also, um, it's pretty wide. It comes up to the back of the head as well. Um, but these little guys in here, these deep ones, um, these are kind of the, the main culprits with some of these headaches um, because these can restrict the movement. I'll show you a really good stretch at the end of this video on how to kind of target those. So how can we treat this? A lot of it has to do with the postural stuff that we do. So if you find yourself suffering from these types of headaches um, frequently, um, do a lot of the stuff that we talked about kind of fixing the posture. Um, yes, I go back to week one where there's no such thing as, um, <clears throat> excuse me, as perfect posture. It's more about moving um, during the day. But, you know, there are some things that we can do to kind of correct different dysfunctions that we may have. Okay, so um, if you guys have seen any of my videos, we talk about a lot of these stretches. Huh? Like, um, you have the top left one here. I couldn't hear you. Um, this, this is the levator scap stretch okay so the head's to the side and down so it's kind of like you're looking down at your armpit maybe trying to smell your armpit that's kind of the direction of your head and you want to pull in that direction okay our upper trap stretch very important one to do multiple times throughout the day this big guy here in the middle that's your sternocleidomastoid stretch okay so this muscle is a little tricky um so let's take for instance the right sternocleidomastoid and we call it SCOM for short scm we call it the SCOM muscle. So if you hear me accidentally say SCOM, that's um, what we call it. It works to bend your head to the same side, but rotate it to the opposite side. So I don't know if you guys can see the video of actually me here, um, but it bends it to the same side and rotates it to the opposite side. So if you want to stretch it, so let's say you get constant headaches on that right side and we want to stretch that right SCOM, we want to tilt our head to the opposite side and look towards the same of that muscle. If you do that and you kind of feel the musculature in there, you'll feel a little bit of a stretch, okay? 
then you can kind of take your hands and just give a light pressure in that direction to kind of help work on stretching that muscle out. Okay, and then we have our infamous doorway stretch, right? We want to keep those pectoral muscles in the front of our chest stretched out um, so that our shoulders can reach back to that optimal, more optimal position um, behind us. And along with that, some of the same exercises that we normally do. So we have our chin tucks, okay? Again, the double chin. Um, when we're doing that exercise, we wanna see the double chin. If you don't have the double chin, you're not doing it right, okay? Then we have the band pulls, okay? That's gonna work and strengthen those muscles that are between the shoulder blades, help them pull them together back and down. Um, same as just some simple scap squeezes, um, bringing the shoulder blades together. I like to give the cue of try to put your shoulder blades in your back pocket, okay? So that brings them together and down, um, putting them in your back pocket. Uh, and then the two, I think this is the end, yep. The two that I wanna show you um, in person, and let me stop sharing. Okay, does everyone see me again? I'm gonna mute everyone so it's just me. Okay, so it should just be a big screen of me. Um, much bigger crowd now. Um, if you guys missed the first half of this, it's okay. I, I'm recording it. Um, it'll be sent out with all the other videos here pretty soon once I wrap them all up. But the two things I wanted to show you in person for this um, is what we call like a, it's like C0 to C1. So that joint between the skull and that first um, cervical vertebrae and then even a little bit of C1, C2. So the chin tuck, the chin tuck is here, right? Where we're trying to tuck our chin, show on the double chin. This one is you wanna do more of a tilt, but you don't want, you wanna try not to move your neck. So it's just there. So that cervical flexion, we don't want all of that. We want just that. Everyone see that little movement? That's gonna pull on those little tiny muscles up there at the base of the skull. Okay, so it's just a little bit of a tilt forward and you wanna to try to hold that, okay? Now, another thing that I like to do for my headache patients is to massage those muscles. So let me see if I can get this just right, okay? So those muscles are all, you feel this big bump in the back of your head, okay? This is our external occipital protuberance, okay? There's your SAT word for the day. A big bump has a name. Okay, just below that, you can kind of get in there and start feeling some of that musculature right at the base of your skull. Okay, now what you want to try to do is get a foam roller, um, a lacrosse ball, something, or a, um, a significant other, a really good friend, whatever it takes. You want to lie on your back, and the technique that I use is I take my fingers like this and I'll pull them back to that position and then I'll just push up in that area. Okay, so it's like a trigger point release technique um, as if you're doing a lacrosse ball, foam roll or anything like that, but you're using the fingertips to kind of push up in that little area right there. Okay, there's a lot of, you know, tools and toys out in the market that you can use. One of my favorites is this. Okay, it's a wedge. You can kind of put that right there in that area and just lay on it. And it's gonna push on those little tiny muscles. Okay, it's gonna help increase range of motion, decrease um, the tightness, promote blood flow, all that stuff can help um, decrease the frequency of these headaches and hopefully, uh, you know, the idea is to get rid of them. But uh, yeah, that's my little presentation on um, headaches. That's just one type of headache. Um, this isn't, you know, your migraine or anything like that. Other things, you know, decrease your stress, decrease how much time you spend in front of a screen. I understand that that's some of our jobs. You just staring at a screen all day, I get it. Um, try to get one of the screens that decreases how much light actually goes into your eyes. That could, you know, contribute to the headaches. Um, drink plenty of water, dehydration can lead to headaches. Uh, so there's all different kinds of things that we can do, but physically, as a physical therapist, you know, those are some of the things that you can do to help decrease the headaches. But that is all I have. So Diane, it's not typically coming from the face, 
Okay, so a lot of times when you put the pressure on like where it hurts, there's this theory called the gate control theory of pain. Okay, so basically the nerves are all fighting to race down the highway to get up to your brain to send a signal. So when you have the pain in that area and you push somewhere else, the signals for pressure actually move faster than the signals for pain. So your brain is sensing like, hey, there's pressure. Somebody's pushing on your head and the signal of pain's not getting there as quickly. It's not getting there as frequently. Okay, so you're not doing anything to get rid of the pain. You're just kind of masking it and putting a Band-Aid on it. Um, and that's why it kind of feels better when you kind of have those headaches, especially behind the eyes. Try to do some of those techniques. Try to stretch this here. Try to do your levator scap. Try to do your upper trap. Sorry, I'm facing the wrong way now. Try to do these ones. Try to do some pressure. Um, trigger point release at the base of the skull um, because that's typically where it's coming from. Okay, so you got to attack the source and not just the Band-Aid. Okay, does that make sense? You're welcome. Make sure you guys fill out that form so you guys get points, your pro club points for, for being here. If there's no other questions, I'm going to hang out for four more minutes and then end the call. Thanks, Wayne. You're welcome. Y'all have a good day. Thanks, Wayne. I'll be down for you to help me out. <laughs> yeah, man. So if a person is causing the headache, giving them a massage will relieve the headache. Give the person who's causing you a headache, <laughs> giving them a massage. Sounds to me like they need to give you a massage if they're giving you a headache. But yes, that is another technique of, of alleviating headaches is um, massage therapists. Massage therapists are very good at helping with that. Um, I will always advocate for um, LMTs to um, get their paycheck. Absolutely. They are miracle workers with their hands. I'll tell you what. You're welcome. I enjoy doing them. <laughs>